Well, week nine, the last week of October. I know, crazy, right, that we made it this far into the college football season, but hey, we're getting there. We're getting real close to the end, sadly. And I'm already, I'm already, I'm already sad, but you know, it is what it is. We're heading into November. This week is what I consider, and you know, what some people may also consider the dead week. And if you don't know what the dead week means, it means a lot of unranked teams going up against ranked teams. And that could prove to either be the most boring slate of games, you know, like the most boring slate of games you'll ever see in a college football weekend, or alternatively, the most wild, crazy, unpredictable type things to happen in college football, because you know, you know, if an unranked team beats a highly ranked team, something's going down. And there are a lot of games this week. So, you know, there's only three, you know, top 25 matchups this week. So, you know, instead of the smorgasbord we had the last couple weeks, you know, it's been kind of, it's been kind of lightened up a little bit, you know. Got to gotta feed everybody else. Got to give everybody else some bread. Got to give everybody else some crumbs. You know, so not everybody's taking the plate. Everybody's getting some scraps. So Thursday night, actually, we got a couple games on Thursday night. Uh, you know, we got Virginia Tech, NC State. NC State still ranked just because they are. They really shouldn't be ranked at this point. You know, Jack Chambers is the quarterback now for NC State, as we know. You know, the Wolfpack are pretty well rested. They had a bye last week. And they got to bounce back against the Hokies. And the Hokies, you know, have looked absolutely dreadful this year. I don't even know how they're 2-5, and five, but they're 2-5. and five. Just dreadful football they've been playing. And, you know, NC State, all they got to do is win. That's all they got to do. But you should be watching the first highlighted game I have. And this is like the only Pac-12 game that looked interesting enough. The highlight, and that is the Utah Washington State game as Cam Ward takes on Cam Rice. So, the battle of the Cams out here in Wazoo. You know, it's going to be an interesting one, you know, because, you know, Utah's still riding high after the USC win. Washington State, they've had some, they've had, they've had some dry spells here and there, but they're still a pretty good team that you know can win some games. You know, this team can win. You know, this team can. And, like, Utah still, you know, they still have two losses. Like, you know, and and, they're, and it's kind of weird because, you know, the way the Pac-12 works this year uh, because the divisions got scrapped, you know, highest winning percentage by the top two teams. So Utah cannot afford another loss here. They cannot. You know, that that's really why I highlighted this game first, you know, because Utah already has one. And... You know, this is like one of the better teams in the Pac-12, so that's why I highlighted this game. In the noon window on Saturday, I've highlighted a couple. And, you know, we'll talk about the big one, you know, after I talk about Notre Dame-Syracuse. Because I highlighted this game first. Sean Tucker, who got only five carries last week. But we're not going to talk about that, because that was last week. And, you know... I'm still mad. I'm still mad that Syracuse lost, but it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. They can't have a letdown like what happened against Clemson. They, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they can't. They can't get away from the philosophy that should have beaten Clemson. They cannot get away from the philosophy that should have beaten Clemson. Notre Dame is tricky, and they're not average. They're tricky because. This is the same Notre Dame team that beat North Carolina, by the way. <laughs> you know, a ranked North Carolina that we'll talk about. A, a ranked North Carolina with a talented quarterback that we'll talk about. You know, But then again, this is the Notre Dame team that lost to Marshall. This is the Notre Dame team that lost to Stanford. This is the Notre Dame team that took Ohio State to the limit. Basically the only team that's taken Ohio State to the limit, you know. So again, a wishy-washy type team that Notre Dame is. If they beat Syracuse, it's gonna it's gonna be real hilarious. 
Um, at the same time, it's going to be real sad for Syracuse because, you know, it is what it is. It'd be a non-conference loss, but, you know, a loss like that ain't going to do you any good, you know. And then the big one in the noon window, of course, you know, big noon already coming. Ohio State, Penn State, you know, C.J. Stroud, and he's going up against the Nittany Lions defense led by Abdul Carter and Jaeen Brown, you know, or rather Jair Brown, excuse me, not whatever I just said. Again, this Penn State defense is good. It's, it's a good defense. They can't stop the run, though. And that's where, you know, Mide Williams, that's that's where Travion Henderson, even though, you know, you know, the injuries for Ohio State have been, you know, kind of, they've been there all season. But, you know, guys are starting to get healthy. And Ohio State's looking, you know, like, honestly, this is the number one team in the country right now. But, you know. That, that's just that's just me being you know kind of biased here, but you know we'll talk about the actual number team, number one team in a minute. But you know Ohio State, they look like the number one team, but they gotta prove it. And you know this is their first big test of the season, you know, or rather in the quite some time. Because again, you know the opener gets no today, and that was big. And it turned out to be, it ended up being nothing. But Penn State, they are still in the driver's seat for the Big Ten title. They just got to beat Ohio State. You know, talented Penn State team too. They can beat Ohio State. It's just how are they going to do it. And Ohio State, they want to assert their will, assert their dominance. Because they beat Penn State, you know, not the last 10 years or whatever. So we'll see what happens in this game. And then TCU West Virginia just cause, you know, Max Duggan and the Horn Frogs trying not to have a letdown because again they've had some games the past few weeks where they've, you know you know, they've trailed by like fourteen plus points. And that's not a recipe for success. But luckily TCU goes up against West Virginia this week. And again, the line for this game is very close from what I saw. It was like, you know, TCU only favored by seven. I don't know how, but West Virginia's defense is awful. What West Virginia's offense can score, but are they going to be able to score enough to stop TCU? Who knows? Who knows? And then in the afternoon, you know, we got a couple of big ones. Oh, boy. Oklahoma State, Kansas State. That's the first big one, honestly. Game of the week material right here. You know, really for me, game of the week. You know, you got Deuce Spawn and whoever Kansas State is going to start at quarterback, I have no idea um, right now because it's Wednesday. Um, K-State will make a decision on who starts. Will it be Martinez? Will it be Will Howard? Will it be somebody else? Who knows? And then you have, you know, Oklahoma State led by Spencer Sanders on the other side. Of a really good defense from Oklahoma State on the other side of the football. And, you know, the, you know Kansas State has an interesting defense, too. It's, again, they just kind of they kind of got lost in the shuffle against TCU. So, yeah, at first, at first, you know, TCU wasn't really doing anything. But then, you know, the second half came and... Boom, there it was. Similar to how Oklahoma State kind of clamped down in the second half against Texas after that first half where they just kind of let things happen. So this one's going to be interesting because, you know, again, these two defenses are interesting. These two offenses are very good. So I wonder who's going to get the edge in this one. And then Cincinnati UCF. Yes, Cincinnati back in the top 25. Number 20 in the country. Ben Bryant, Charles McClellan. A good defense, a good defense. Now, again, that game against SMU last week, you know, the score was closer than it indicated because, I mean, really, the Bearcats dominated on defense, you know, for the most of that game. But this is a UCF squad that's pretty talented, you know, a highlighted game for me, you know, because you got John Plumley out here leading the team in rushing, Leading the team, well, of course, he's the quarterback, so he leads the team in passing, and he's got a combined, what, 18 touchdowns this year? 16, 18 touchdowns this year? You know, and the running back game for the Knights is also pretty deadly, so um, this one's going to be this one's gonna be fun. I guarantee you that. This one's going to be a fun one 
for UCF and Cincinnati. Uh, you know, these two teams have played in pretty big games before, but this one, this one's, this one's gonna be real good. You know, still trying to figure out who that group of five team is that's gonna come out from. You know, and it looks like it's gonna come from the American yet again. You know, despite the fact that the Sun Belt has provided us with a lot of entertainment this year. But I do believe the Group of Five team that will be going to, what, the Cotton Bowl will be from the American this year. It's, it's going to, but right now the, the focus is on Cincinnati. But we'll talk about that other team, Tulane, hopefully next week again when they play again. Because they don't play this week. They're on a bye. Um, Oregon, California. I don't know why. I don't know why, you know, Cal's even playing this game because they, they, they just haven't looked good. And you know Bo Nix and the Ducks have been looking good. So, this one's going to be this one's gonna be fun for Oregon, maybe. Not so much for Cal, but I'd say for Oregon, this would be pretty fun. You know, again, this is why I didn't talk about this one, you know, as a highlighted game for me. Because, again, I just don't see California doing anything. You know, because, again, California just has not been very consistent at all. Then you got Wake Forest, Louisville. Now, I was thinking, you know, should I make this a game that's, you know, a part of the top six games of the week? But I was like, nah. You know, yeah, Malik Cunningham's still at Louisville. But you got Sam Hartman. You got Wake Forest, you know, that, that offense too much for Louisville's defense. So, you know, I, I think that's going to be a deciding factor, you know, at all costs. And then Florida, Georgia, you already know. Um, Anthony Richardson just has to have a game of his life, and I don't know if he's going to have that. So, I mean, you got Stetson Bennett and the Dogs out here, you know, when they... When they look like the number one team in the country, they look like the number one team in the country. When they don't look like the number one team in the country, they haven't. But honestly, again, like it, it's just it's just like I said, like Anthony Richardson's gonna have to have the game of his life to even put a dent in the dogs defense. You know, Georgia Georgia being the number one team again, it's it's been kind of questionable because of those two games that they had with Missouri, you know, with Kent State, you know, it's, it's, it's been kind of questionable, but they, they've proven that they're still the champs, they're still the number one team until, you know, at least the rankings come out for the CFP on November 1st. And then you got Illinois, Nebraska, you know, Nebraska's a team that they're, 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 they're inconsistent. You know they they get they've gotten blown out. They've lost you know one score games, but they they win games too. So you know it's it's kind of it's kind of weird, you know, for Nebraska. But Illinois leading the Big Ten West right now, still with, led by Chase Brown, running and running and running and running and running and running and running all over teams. And he might do that again against Nebraska because again, Nebraska's not that good, but they're not terrible. So Nebraska can put up a fight. So we'll see how that one goes for the number 17 team in the country. And then Missouri, South Carolina, Spencer Rattler, and the Cox. They are going to stay at home, take on a Missouri team that just has been struggling to score on offense. Like Missouri, I don't even know what their issue is. Like It's just a wholesale list of issues at this point. Just not a great team, let me tell you. And then in the evening, Kentucky, Tennessee, honestly, that might be the only one you really need to pay attention to because, again, there's other, you know, top 15, top 20 teams in action in the evening slate. But Hendon Hooker and the Vols, and they can't look ahead, by the way. They cannot look ahead to Georgia. they got to take on Chris Rodriguez, Kentucky, um, Will Levis, who knows how, what his status is right now. I believe I believe he got injured at one point, but I believe he's all right. Um, you know, Kentucky, you know, despite the fact that they're a two-loss team, they can still play for football. They can still contend in the SEC. We'll find out, you know, again, is Tennessee, is Tennessee, you know, focusing too hard on Georgia? If they are focusing too hard on Georgia, that gives Kentucky a little bit of an edge. If they aren't, then Tennessee, 
Oh boy. They might put hurt on Kentucky. Kentucky just wants to win. They may be out of the SEC East race at this point, but it honestly depends on how the rest of the season goes. And let's see, you know, let's see. Speaking of let's see, and what about Arizona? They're taking on USC, you know. They got Jade Delora. They got Jacob Cowing. A, a pretty good dynamic duo right there, if I say so myself. But then you have Caleb Williams on the other side. Yeah, it's on the road. You know, USC's on the road. Yeah, USC's defense is pretty bad. Yeah, USC can score at will. That That's that's the big thing. And is Arizona going to be able to make one stop? All Arizona needs to do is have the one stop that can put a dent into USC's season. Because again, USC is still trying to contend for not only a Pac-12 title, but for the college football playoff. They still can get there. We're we're not we're not done with this race. We still we're not done with this race for the CFP. We still have a whole month or so to go. We still have a whole six weeks at least to go. So this one's big. This one's a big one. Michigan State, Michigan. Another big one. The big house. Blake Horam. Is he gonna run all over Michigan State? Let's see what Mel Tucker can do. Can he get these Spartans riled up just enough in this rivalry game to, you know, maybe derail Michigan season? But honestly, I don't know if that's going to happen because, I mean, Michigan State's defense is horrible, horrible defense. Just awful. You see, you, y'all have seen that? Y'all have seen that Michigan State defense? It's bad. It's real bad. Beyond bad. And then Ole Miss, Texas A&M, you know, there, there's, there, there's something, you know, about Jimbo Fisher that just, it's just like, why at this point? Like, like A&M is just, why? Why why are you, are, why are you are the, the way you are? Ole Miss just trying to bounce back. They got that running game, you know, that's like puts up 250 plus yards a game each and every week. And, you know, A&M has to be prepared for that. But they haven't been prepared for that all season, you know, because they've been letting people run all over them like it's nobody's business. So A&M has to try and stop the run. They have to try. We'll see if they can do that in this game. And then there's Pitt, North Carolina. Again, the same North Carolina team that lost to Notre Dame, led by Drake May, who's been kind of underrated this year. Um, we we know what this man can do. We know he's been doing damage all season long. But again, nobody's talking about it because it's the ACC, and you know Keaton Slovis and the Pitt Panthers after an intriguing start to the year have just kind of been meh. And I mean, what what kind of what kind of matchup is this? Like this is definitely an under the radar type matchup. Again, the coastal, you know. The Coastal Division of the ACC is also in, you know, a state of flux because, you know, again, there's just a lot of bad going down the list. And you got North Carolina at the top, perfect in the ACC Coastal right now. But they got to, but North Carolina has to keep this up. I think they want Clemson. I think North Carolina wants Clemson. I think they may be able to get there. They just got to get through the rest of this ACC Coastal slate. We'll see if they can do that. And then the last game of the evening, Pac-12 after dark, which means insanity will brew as Stanford takes on Kentucky. Or rather, not Kentucky, UCLA. I, I got my wrong. Sorry, basketball fans. I got my, my wrong blue blood, you know, switching in there. But anyway, Dorian Thompson Robinson and the Bruins are at home. They're taking on Stanford. Stanford's pretty inconsistent, as in not that good. Again, they have the one win against Notre Dame. UCLA, coming off a loss, has to, you know, bounce back. They can't they can't stay too unfocused. They gotta they get they, they gotta keep winning. And that, that's the moral of the story. You just gotta keep winning. All these teams this week in these Ranked versus unranked matchups. These ranked teams, they have to keep winning. For the three ranked matchups, however, oh boy, 
some slobber knockers we're going to have. Ohio State, Penn State, Kentucky, Tennessee, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. Those three games are definitely the best three games of the week. With my personal pick being Oklahoma State, Kansas State. Just because, you know, the Big 12 is basically the most intriguing race for, you know, as far as conferences go. Because again, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna come down to somebody in the Big Twelve, I think, for the playoff at least, yeah, unless the Big Twelve knocks itself out, which that would be, uh, that'd be pretty sad, and then that'd be pretty hilarious at the same time, you know, because right now I really just don't have a gauge of where, you know, you know, like it's clear the SEC and the Big Ten are ahead. It's clear the Big Twelve kind of occupies that third tier along with the ACC and the Pac-12. And again, it's kind of weird because you can kind of change it up, you know, with, with how the other three conferences are as far as, you know, getting a team into the CFB because the ACC has Clemson, North Carolina, the Big 12, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, TCU. And again, we don't know what's going to come out of the Big 12. Hell, somebody, somebody else could, you know, state their claim in the Big 12, and then the Pac-12 is still a smorgasbord of USC, Oregon, Utah, and USC, but Utah has two losses, so they're likely out of the CFP discussion right now. So it's going to be an interesting, you know, way to kind of gauge this the last time the AP poll will be used in this Season, you know, we'll be going by the college football playoff rankings, and that means the previews will be coming back out on Tuesday nights instead. Uh, it might, it might be, you know, like late Tuesday night going into Wednesday, but for the most part, I think I'm gonna try and make it Tuesday nights for the previews. But who knows? Um, and that will be, you know, November first when the first college football playoff rankings come out. So. Again, what or what what do y'all think is going to happen this weekend? I think there might be some upsets brewing, um, but you never know when and you never know where. So, who knows? We'll see what happens this weekend. I cannot wait for all this college football feasting that I'm going to be doing all all weekend long. It's gonna be it's gonna be a smorgasbord of football. Let me tell you, because um, I mean. I don't think I expected to come back to be doing 2 a.m. recaps again so soon. I was enjoying the 11.30 p.m. recaps. I was enjoying the 11, 11.30 p.m. recaps. But okay, 2 a.m. it is. I'll see you on Sunday at 2 a.m. All right? Y'all take care, and I'll see you soon.